Well, I'm at the History of Science and Islam Library, uh, founded by Professor Fuat Sezgin here in Istanbul, and there's some amazing books here. Most of them are in Arabic or Turkish, German, a few are in English. And uh, there's a couple of dusty old tomes here, which I've come across. One is this book, I'm just gonna read a very short extract from. It's called The Preaching of Islam, A History of the Propagation of the Muslim Faith by Professor T.W. Arnold. He was Professor of Arabic at the University of London. And this book, the second edition, was published in 1913, so it's well over a century ago. And even then, that was a, a revised edition. At the very end, of the conclusion, uh, he says something that I think is um, classically Orientalist. This is a, the Orientalist British view of the Muslim world, 1913, just before the First World War. And he writes in the very last paragraph, what further influence these two movements will have on the missionary life of Islam, the future can only show. But their very activity at the present day is a proof that Islam is not dead. He's talking here about the missionary activity in the Muslim world. And uh, he says, the spiritual energy of Islam is not, as has been so often maintained, commensurate with its political power. Frederick Denison Morris was giving expression to one of the most commonly received opinions in Britain, presumably, regarding this faith, Islam, when he said, it has been proved that Mohammedism can only thrive while it is aiming at conquest. This view was expressed in 1852. But our author says, on the contrary, the loss of political power and worldly prosperity, this is the Muslim world, has served to bring to the front the finer spiritual qualities, which are the truest incentives to missionary work. Islam has learned that the uses of adversity, and so far from a decline in worldly prosperity being a presage of the decay of this faith, it is significant that those very Muslim countries that have been longest under Christian rule show themselves most active in the work of proselytizing. In other words, dawah. He doesn't even use the word dawah, he talks about proselytizing. The Indian and Malay Mohammedans, as he calls Muslims, display a zeal and enthusiasm for the spread of the faith, which one looks for in vain in Turkey and Morocco. So there we are, that's uh, the Orientalist British perspective. Even though the Muslim world is under Christian rule, which he doesn't complain about, of course, there's still a lot of spiritual activity going on, a lot of dawah. So there we are, just thought I'd share that little, little vignette with you.